the Splinter Cell franchise took a different turn with the release of Splinter Cell Conviction. While the earlier games primarily centered on stealth over action, Conviction removed some features, toned down the stealth, and included a bigger focus on action. In my opinion, it is a fun game, but it doesn't really feel like a Splinter Cell title. It did receive some backlash, and from what I understand, the developers were aware and aimed to rectify the issues in the next game, Splinter Cell Blacklist. Developed by Ubisoft Toronto and published by Ubisoft, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Blacklist was released for PC, Wii U, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360 in August 2013. For this review, I played the PC version. This review will contain some spoilers. So if you're sensitive to spoilers, now is the time to stop watching. You have been warned. Now let's take a look at Splinter Cell Blacklist and see how it turned out. Word of a stunning attack on the massive U.S. military installation on the island of Guam. The deadliest strike on a U.S. base since Pearl Harbor. A group calling themselves the Engineers has claimed responsibility. Set after the events of conviction, a terrorist organization known as the Engineers are orchestrating a series of attacks referred to as the Blacklist on the United States. They plan to continue attacking until the U.S. recalls all their military forces from the numerous countries around the world. In response, the U.S. recruits returning protagonist Sam Fisher, along with several of his colleagues, into the newly formed 4th Echelon, a special operations and counter-terrorism unit, which operates out of a plane called the Paladin, and they are tasked with stopping the engineers. What do we have in Benghazi? My contact is at a CIA safe house. They've detained a subject with intel on Guam, but no one gets to ask questions until they're done with them. How'd they nab him? I do like the plot and the way things are presented. That, along with the music, help convey a constant sense of urgency and tension. I also really enjoyed the voice performances, although Michael Ironside does not return to voice Sam, which is disappointing. In his place is actor Eric Johnson, who I think does a fine job. In fact, his performance is great. However, Sam looks and sounds younger here, and the only reason it's odd is because this is a sequel. Now, we can't forget Sam has a grown daughter, and whenever they talk, that's usually when I'm reminded of Michael Ironside absence. I also feel his personality is a little off. He's very serious, with few wisecracks this time around, almost like he has no sense of humor anymore. Considering the events of the prior two games, I suppose he's changed somewhat. But even still, I look at and hear this new Sam and something just isn't right. You here to save me? I'm here to save what you know. Sit. Sam, it's about to get ugly. Local talent's closing on your position. Blacklist is an interesting game because it's a sequel, and yet it feels like it could have been a reboot. Now, it's not a complete return to form, but it does blend the classic Splinter Cell gameplay with the new gameplay style of Conviction. I have read that the creative director of Conviction also worked on Blacklist. You know, the same guy who said Chaos Theory is hardcore. Now, if you thought the hardcore statement was dumb, you'll appreciate this. According to an article I found, Ubisoft Toronto founder Jade Raymond said Splinter Cell's popularity is held back by its complexity. Apparently, these games are very complex and difficult to play. And she specifically refers to assessing a situation before acting. Like when you think about what you're going to do before entering a room. Very complex stuff. Very complex. Wow. As for Blacklist, she proceeds to say, We brought back the purest hardcore version, which is you want to ghost through the level and get through it without killing a single person. Here we go again with that word, hardcore. So what have we learned from all this? Well, the series is very complex, and Chaos Theory is hardcore. And here I was, thinking that the players who were turned off by the earlier games just didn't like stealth or Splinter Cell's brand of stealth. No, apparently I was wrong. These are actually hardcore games that are too complex. That's what it is. Staying quiet and out of sight is a very complex concept. So the games before Conviction are real brain busters, especially those first two, which are linear and teach you everything you need to know in the first level. I don't know how I got through them. Oh man, don't even get me started on Chaos Theory. Holy shit. The levels are more open, and it offers so many options that it was just so hardcore, complex, and difficult to play. 
You get the fuck out of here. Nobody said that ever. And it's their marketing speak that bothers me. Hardcore, complexity, difficult to play. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? It kind of comes across as condescending, although I don't believe that was their intent. But anyone can see right through the bullshit. The fact is, they wanted the franchise to appeal to a wider audience. Why? To make more money. But they'll never say that. This is a business after all, and I get it. Action games are big sellers. So they make conviction action-oriented, slap the Splinter Cell title on it, prop it up as more accessible, and stupidly refer to the earlier games as hardcore and complex. Then they receive backlash, go figure, so they decide to bring back the purest hardcore version, or in other words, the things that make Splinter Cell, Splinter Cell, in the next game, Blacklist. I would consider Blacklist to be a stealth action title with a good balance of stealth and action. Now, the game does encourage both stealth and action-oriented approaches, and you are rewarded for both, just like in Conviction. You are awarded points for completing certain actions, and the different actions fit into different play styles. However, you are awarded the most points for a pure ghost style, or in other words, pure stealth. You earn money for completing challenges and are scored at the end of each mission. The higher your score, the more money you earn. Extra money can be earned by by finding and hacking laptops in the environments, and by capturing specific enemies. Oh? He's breathing, but hurts back. After each mission, you're brought back to the Paladin where you can interact with NPCs, spend money on plane upgrades and gear, and initiate the next mission. You can use the Strategic Mission Interface, SMI, to view and initiate any available missions, including 4E missions, which can be seen as side missions. Most 4E missions can be played solo or cooperatively, and the SMI is also where you can access the multiplayer Spies vs. Mercs mode, which I did not get to try. The 4E missions come from the different NPCs on the Paladin, and are similar to to the Deniable Ops missions in Conviction. Briggs's missions are cooperative only. Grimm's missions require you not to be detected. Charlie's missions require you to survive waves of enemies. And Coben's missions require you to eliminate all hostiles by any means necessary. Story missions are unlocked as you progress through the story, and all of them can be replayed. One thing I really like about Blacklist is the upgrades and gear. The money you earn can be spent to upgrade different parts of the Paladin, which result in gameplay benefits. You can also spend money on gear for Sam and your Spy and Merc characters. You can buy op suit upgrades, which affect your stats in armor, stealth, and weapon handling, as well as purchase goggle upgrades and new gadgets and weapons, along with upgrades for them. You can create and save different loadouts and can experiment with all kinds of combinations. Since what you equip does have an effect on stats, what you choose is actually important important. This type of customization does add to the replay value of the game, and I found the loop of earning money so I could buy new stuff to be somewhat addictive. What's really great about Blacklist is that everything works pretty well. It retains the faster pace and action-oriented approach of conviction, but you typically have the option to sneak and climb around in the shadows and evade enemies. The gunplay looks and feels great, and you're given plenty of tools to knock out, misdirect, distract, and engage foes. Takedowns and weapon kills fill up your execute gauge, which enables you to mark targets and execute or neutralize them in rapid succession, a feature introduced in conviction. And Blacklist brings back the ability to lure enemies at the press of a button. Hey. Stealth works much like it did in the games that precede Conviction. The key to remaining undetected is to stay quiet and out of sight, and you can pick up and move bodies again. Sam's goggles can be upgraded to include sonar vision, which can detect enemies through walls, unless you're playing on the hardest difficulty, Perfectionist. You can switch between lethal and non-lethal takedowns, and use weapons and gadgets to kill or knock out foes. Each gadget is ideal for a specific playstyle, but you can equip any combination, and much of the equipment should be familiar 
familiar to series veterans. You've got your frag, flash, and smoke grenades, along with incendiary and sleeping and tear gas grenades. You can set up traps with proximity mines and proximity shockers, distract foes with sticky noisemakers, sticky EMPs, and sticky cameras, which unleash sleeping gas again, and can be upgraded with flash and explosive charges. You can now equip one of multiple crossbows that can fire and switch between different bolt types, like sleeping gas and sticky shockers. One of the new standout gadgets is the Tri-Rotor, which is a flying drone that can be used to scout areas and neutralize foes. I found it comes in quite handy in certain situations. While Blacklist brings back a lot of what makes Splinter Cell Splinter Cell, it does not feature the same type of non-linear level design that's on offer in Chaos Theory. The environments here are more in line with those in Conviction, primarily linear with the player moving from one area to another. However, also like Conviction, most environments offer plenty of ways to get around and solve problems. You can climb through windows, sneak through shafts, climb pipes, and find all kinds of routes through an area. While I prefer the design of the levels in Chaos Theory with their inter connected areas and such, the level design in Blacklist does work well and allows for different approaches. Blacklist does come with many missions and takes you to different locations around the globe, including Afghanistan, Yemen, Turkey, Cuba, Australia, England, and several states across the US. 4E missions are designed with co-op in mind, and even include features that require more than one player, but they're all doable solo, with the exception of the co-op only missions, obviously. As for the story missions, you'll have to complete typical Splinter Cell objectives, like retrieve information, plant things, disable things, etc. The campaign does come with a few set pieces, like when you have to defend an aircraft and van, and one mission puts you in the shoes of Briggs at certain points. And these segments play out as first-person shooters. Blacklist does feature a decent variety of enemy types and also sees the return of dogs, which can sniff Sam out. You'll be up against typical soldiers and goons, but there's also clearly defined types that pose different threats. Heavy infantry troops are heavily armored, but can easily be taken down with takedowns from behind, among other sneak attacks. Drone operators can jam Sam's goggles, and as the name implies, they operate drones. Snipers can spot Sam at long range, even in the dark, and commandos can spot him in the dark and through smoke. Most enemies can be found patrolling or standing around, so you'll need to be mindful of your surroundings and where they are. That is, if you're trying to sneak. If you prefer to shoot your way through, you'll want to bring the appropriate gear. You're typically outnumbered, and Sam can die quickly, especially if his op suit is suited for stealth and lacks armor, so having a general idea of what kind of approach you want to take before starting a mission is probably a good idea. Although there are segments that will require you to leave hostiles untouched, meaning you need to evade them. And a few situations kind of feel like they encourage combat, but most of the time I felt like I had a choice between stealth and action. When it comes to the presentation, much like Conviction, I think Blacklist looks pretty slick. The environments are diverse and detailed, and the visual effects are nice. I really like the audio work in this game. The sound effects are on par with the previous titles, but I feel the music here, in combination with the way the cutscenes are presented, gives the game a cinematic quality. Blacklist features a lot of music that makes situations feel tense, including during cutscenes, even though I felt it sometimes comes across as humorous, because of how dramatic some of the tunes are. On the technical side, I did not not encounter any issues. Although I should mention that before I started playing, I did consult the game's PC gaming wiki page and applied some fixes. Piece of cake. Oh shit, Charlie. I think I pulled a red wire. Is that bad? Whoa, what? No gas, get out of there! Gotcha. Asshole. 
personally, I think Blacklist is the best Splinter Cell game since Chaos Theory. I actually played this once before on Wii U and remember enjoying it. I figured now that I've played all the main titles that precede it, I might look at Blacklist differently this time. But no, I genuinely enjoy this game. I am disappointed that Michael Ironside didn't return to voice Sam, and I do think the actor in his place is an odd choice. Not that he did a bad job, but I feel his performance just isn't right for the character. As for the gameplay, I had a great time. This is a Splinter Cell game that gives you plenty of options and reasons to return. Although it is a bit different than Chaos Theory, which I still feel is the pinnacle of the series. However, I cannot say I dislike this more action-oriented direction. It's just that Splinter Cell established itself as a stealth series, and Chaos Theory perfected that formula, so I can understand why Conviction alienated certain fans. Blacklist brings back a lot of the good stuff, and I think it all meshes well with the action. I would absolutely recommend Splinter Cell Blacklist. I think the developers succeeded in making a more accessible Splinter Cell title with Blacklist as opposed to Conviction, which to me just felt like a different game. Blacklist at least feels like Splinter Cell. Ultimately, Blacklist is a solid stealth action game and a pretty good Splinter Cell title. Definitely check it out. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of our channel, follow us at the links below, and you can also support us on Patreon. If you're interested in more gaming content, check out our friends over at GameCast.